Chapter Seven of an Essay on the Principle of Population. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jeffrey Edwards. An Essay on the Principle of Population by Thomas Malthus. Chapter Seven. A probable cause of epidemics. Extracts from Mr. Seussmilk's Tables periodical returns of sickly seasons to be expected in certain cases proportion of births to burials for short periods in any country an inadequate criterion of the real average increase of population best criterion of a permanent increase of population great frugality of living one of the causes of the famines of china and indostan evil tendency of one of the clauses in mr pitt's poor bill only one proper way of encouraging population causes of the happiness of nations famine the last and most dreadful mode by which nature represses a redundant population the three propositions considered as established by great attention to cleanliness the plague seems at length to be completely expelled from london but it is not improbable that among the secondary causes that produce even sickly seasons and epidemics ought to be ranked a crowded population and unwholesome and insufficient food i have been led to this remark by looking over some of the tables of mr seussmilk which dr price has extracted in one of his notes to the postscript on the controversy respecting the population of england and wales they are considered as very correct and if such tables were general they would throw great light on the different ways by which population is repressed and prevented from increasing beyond the means of subsistence in any country i will extract a part of the tables with dr price's remarks in the kingdom of prussia and dukedom of lithuania ten years to seventeen o two births twenty one thousand nine hundred and sixty three burials fourteen thousand seven hundred and eighteen marriages five thousand nine hundred and twenty eight proportion of births to marriages thirty seven to ten proportion of births to burials one hundred and fifty to one hundred five years to seventeen sixteen births twenty one thousand six hundred and two burials eleven thousand nine hundred and eighty four marriages four thousand nine hundred and sixty eight proportion of births to marriages thirty seven to ten proportion of births to burials one hundred and eighty to one hundred five years to seventeen fifty six births twenty eight thousand three hundred and ninety two burials nineteen thousand one hundred and fifty four marriages five thousand five hundred and ninety nine proportion of births to marriages fifty to ten proportion of births to burials one hundred and forty eight to one hundred quotes n b in seventeen o nine and seventeen ten a pestilence carried off two hundred and forty seven thousand seven hundred and thirty three of the inhabitants of this country and in seventeen thirty six and seventeen thirty seven epidemics prevailed which again checked its increase End quotes. it may be remarked that the greatest proportion of births to burials was in the five years after the great pestilence duchy of pomerania annual average six years to seventeen o two births six thousand five hundred and forty burials four thousand six hundred and forty seven marriages one thousand eight hundred and ten proportion of births to marriages thirty six to ten proportion of births to burials one hundred and forty to one hundred annual average six years to seventeen o eight births seven thousand four hundred and fifty five burials four thousand two hundred and eight marriages one thousand eight hundred and seventy five proportion of births to marriages thirty nine to ten proportion of births to burials one hundred and seventy seven to one hundred annual average six years to seventeen twenty six births eight thousand four hundred and thirty two burials five thousand six hundred twenty seven marriages two thousand one hundred and thirty one proportion of births to marriages thirty nine to ten
proportion of births to burials one hundred and fifty to one hundred six years to seventeen fifty six births twelve thousand seven hundred and sixty seven burials nine thousand two hundred and eighty one marriages two thousand nine hundred and fifty seven proportion of births to marriages forty three to ten proportion of births to burials one hundred and thirty seven to one hundred quotes in this instance the inhabitants appear to have been almost doubled in fifty-six years no very bad epidemics having once interrupted the increase but the three years immediately following the last period to seventeen fifty nine were so sickly that the births were sunk to ten thousand two hundred and twenty nine and the burials raised to fifteen thousand sixty eight End quotes. Is it not probable that in this case the number of inhabitants had increased faster than the food and the accommodations necessary to preserve them in health? The mass of the people would, upon this supposition, be obliged to live harder, and a great number would be crowded together in one house, and it is not surely improbable that these were among the natural causes that produced the three sickly years. These causes may produce such an effect, though the country absolutely considered, may not be extremely crowded and populous. In a country even thinly inhabited, if an increase of population take place, before more food is raised, and more houses are built, the inhabitants must be distressed in some degree for room and subsistence. Were the marriages in England, for the next eight or ten years, to be more prolific than usual, or even were a greater number of marriages than usual to take place, supposing the number of houses to remain the same, instead of five or six to a cottage, there must be seven or eight, and this, added to the necessity of harder living, would probably have a very unfavourable effect on the health of the common people. Newmark of Brandenburg Annual Average Five years to 1701 Births 5,433, burials, 3,483, marriages, 1,436, proportion of births to marriages, 37 to 10, proportion of births to burials, 155 to 100. Annual average, 5 years to 1726, births, 7,012, burials, 4,254, marriages, 1,713, Proportion of births to marriages, 40 to 10. Proportion of births to burials, 164 to 100. Annual average, 5 years to 1756. Births, 7,978. Burials, 5,567. Marriages, 1,891. Proportion of births to marriages, 42 to 10. Proportion of births to burials, 143 to 100. Quotes, Epidemics prevailed for six years, from 1736 to 1741, which checked the increase. End quotes. Dukedom of Magdenburg. Annual average, five years to 1702. Births, 6,431. Burials, 4,103. Marriages, 1,681. Proportion of births to marriages, 38 to 10. Proportion of births to burials, 156 to 100. Annual average, 5 years to 1717. Births, 7,590. Burials, 5,335. Marriages, 2,076. Proportion of births to marriages, 36 to 10. Proportion of births to burials, 142 to 100. Annual average, 5 years to 1756. Births, 8,850. Burials, 8,069. Marriages, 2,193. Proportion of births to marriages, 40 to 10. Proportion of births to burials, 109 to 100. Quotes. The year 1738, 1740, 1750, and 1751 were particularly sickly. End quotes. For further information on this subject, I refer the reader to Mr. Seussmilk's tables. The extracts that I have made are sufficient to show the periodical, though irregular, returns of sickly seasons, and it seems highly probable that a scantiness of room and food was one of the principal causes that occasioned them. It appears from the tables that these countries were increasing rather fast for old states, notwithstanding the occasional seasons that prevailed. Cultivation must have been improving, and marriages, consequently, encouraged, 
for the checks to population appear to have been rather of the positive than of the preventative kind when from a prospect of increasing plenty in any country the weight that represses population is in some degree removed it is highly probable that the motion will be continued beyond the operation of the cause that first impelled it or to be more particular when the increasing produce of a country and the increasing demand for labour so far ameliorate the condition of the labourer as greatly to encourage marriage it is probable that the custom of early marriages will continue till the population of the country has gone beyond the increased produce and sickly seasons appear to be the natural and necessary consequence i should expect therefore that those countries where subsistence was increasing sufficiency at times to encourage population but not to answer all its demands would be more subject to periodical epidemics than those where the population could more completely accommodate itself to the average produce an observation the converse of this will probably also be found true in those countries that are subject to periodical sicknesses the increase of population or the excess of births above the burials will be greater in the intervals of these periods than is usual ceteris paribus in the countries not so much subject to such disorders if turkey and egypt have been nearly stationary in their average population for the last century in the intervals of their periodical plagues the births must have exceeded the burials in a greater proportion than in such countries as france and england the average proportion of births to burials in any country for a period of five to ten years will hence appear to be a very inadequate criterion by which to judge of its real progress in population this proportion certainly shows the rate of increase during those five or ten years but we can by no means thence infer what had been the increase for the twenty years before or what would be the increase for the twenty years after dr price observes that sweden norway russia and the kingdom of naples are increasing fast but the extracts from registers that he has given are not for periods of sufficient extent to establish the fact it is highly probable however that sweden norway and russia are really increasing their population though not at the rate that the proportion of births to burials for the short periods that dr price takes would seem to show Bracket. see dr price's observations volume two postscript to the controversy on the population of england and wales Close bracket. for five years ending in seventeen seventy seven the proportion of births to burials in the kingdom of naples was one hundred and forty four to one hundred but there is reason to suppose that this proportion would indicate an increase much greater than would be really found to have taken place in the kingdom during a period of a hundred years dr short compared the registers of many villages and market towns in england for two periods the first from queen elizabeth to the middle of the last century and the second from different years at the end of the last century to the middle of the present and from a comparison of these extracts it appears that in the former period the births exceeded the burials in the proportion of one hundred and twenty four to one hundred but in the latter only in the proportion of a hundred and eleven to one hundred dr price thinks that the registers in the former period are not to be depended upon but probably in this instance they do not give incorrect proportions at least there are many reasons for expecting to find a greater excess of births above the burials in the former period than in the latter in the natural progress of the population of any country more good land will ceteris paribus be taken into cultivation in the earlier stages of it than in the latter i say ceteris paribus because the increase of the produce of any country will always very greatly depend on the spirit of industry that prevails and the way in which it is directed the knowledge and habits of the people and other temporary causes particularly the degree of civil liberty and equality existing at the time must always have great influence in exciting and directing this spirit and a greater proportional yearly increase of produce will almost invariably be followed by a greater proportional increase of population but besides this great cause which would naturally give the excess of births above burials greater at the end of queen elizabeth's reign than in the middle of the present century i cannot help thinking that the occasional ravages of the plague in the former period must have had some tendency to increase this proportion if an average of ten years had been taken in the intervals of the returns of this dreadful disorder or if the years of plague had been rejected as accidental the registers would certainly give the proportion of births to burials too high for the real average increase of the population 
for some few years after the great plague in sixteen sixty six it is probable that there was a more than usual excess of births above burials particularly if dr price's opinion be founded that england was more populous at the revolution which happened only twenty-two years afterwards than it is at present mr king in sixteen ninety three stated the proportion of the births to the burials throughout the kingdom exclusive of london as one hundred and fifteen to one hundred dr short makes it in the middle of the present century one hundred and eleven to one hundred including london the proportion in france for five years ending in seventeen seventy four was one hundred and seventeen to one hundred if these statements are near the truth and if there are no very great variations at particular periods in the proportions it would appear that the population of france and england has accommodated itself very nearly to the average produce of each country the discouragements to marriage the consequent vicious habits war luxury the silent though certain depopulation of large towns and the close habitations and insufficient food of many of the poor prevent population from increasing beyond the means of subsistence and if i may use an expression which certainly at first appears strange supersede the necessity of a great and ravaging epidemic to repress what is redundant were a wasting plague to sweep off two millions in england and six millions in france there can be no doubt whatever that after the inhabitants had recovered from the dreadful shock the proportion of births to burials would be much above what it is in either country at present in new jersey the proportion of births to deaths on an average of seven years ending in seventeen forty three was as three hundred to one hundred in france and england taking the highest proportion it is as one hundred and seventeen to one hundred great and astonishing as this difference is we ought not to be so wonderstruck at it as to attribute it to the miraculous interposition of heaven the causes of it are not remote latent and mysterious but near us round about us and open to the investigation of every inquiring mind it accords with the most liberal spirit of philosophy to suppose that not a stone can fall or a plant rise without the immediate agency of divine power but we know from experience that these operations of what we call nature have been conducted almost invariably according to fixed laws and since the world began the causes of population and depopulation have probably been as constant as any of the laws of nature with which we are acquainted the passion between the sexes has appeared in every age to be so nearly the same that it may always be considered in algebraic language as a given quantity the great law of necessity which prevents population from increasing in any country beyond the food which it can either produce or acquire is a law so open to our view so obvious and evident to our understandings and so completely confirmed by the experience of every age that we cannot for a moment doubt it the different modes which nature takes to prevent or repress a redundant population do not appear indeed to us so certain and regular but though we cannot always predict the mode we may with certainty predict the fact if the proportion of births to deaths for a few years indicate an increase of numbers much beyond the proportional increased or acquired produce of the country we may be perfectly certain that unless an emigration takes place the deaths will shortly exceed the births and that the increase that had taken place for a few years cannot be the real average increase of the population of the country were there no other depopulating causes every country would without doubt be subject to periodical pestilences or famine the only true criterion of a real and permanent increase in the population of any country is the increase of the means of subsistence but even this criterion is subject to some slight variations which are however completely open to our view and observations in some countries population appears to have been forced that is the people have been habituated by degrees to live almost upon the smallest possible quantity of food there must have been periods in such countries when population increased permanently without an increase in the means of subsistence china seems to answer to this description if the accounts we have of it are to be trusted the lower classes of people are in the habit of living almost upon the smallest possible quantity of food and are glad to get any putrid offals that european labourers would rather starve than eat the law in china which permits parents to expose their children has tended principally thus to force the population a nation in this state must necessarily be subject to famines where a country is so populous in proportion to the means of subsistence that the average produce of it is but barely sufficient to support the lives of the inhabitants any deficiency from the badness of seasons must be fatal 
it is probable that the very frugal manner in which the gentoos are in the habit of living contributes in some degree to the famines of indostan in america where the reward of labour is at present so liberal the lower classes might retrench very considerably in a year of scarcity without materially distressing themselves a famine therefore seems to be almost impossible it may be expected that in the progress of the population of america the labourers will in time be much less liberally rewarded the numbers will in this case permanently increase without a proportional increase in the means of subsistence in the different states of europe there must be some variations in the proportion between the number of inhabitants and the quantity of food consumed arising from the different habits of living that prevail in each state the labourers of the south of england are so accustomed to eat fine wheat and bread that they will suffer themselves to be half starved before they will submit to live like the scotch peasants they might perhaps in time by the constant operation of the hard law of necessity be reduced to live even like the lower chinese and the country would then with the same quantity of food support a greater population but to effect this must always be a most difficult and every friend to humanity will hope an abortive attempt nothing is so common as to hear of encouragements that ought to be given to population if the tendency of mankind to increase be so great as i have represented it to be it may appear strange that this increase does not come when it is thus repeatedly called for the true reason is that the demand for a greater population is made without preparing the funds necessary to support it increase the demand for agricultural labour by promoting cultivation and with it consequently increase the produce of the country and ameliorate the condition of the labourer and no apprehensions whatever need be entertained of the proportional increase of population an attempt to effect this purpose in any other way is vicious cruel and tyrannical and in any state of tolerable freedom cannot therefore succeed it may appear to be the interest of the rulers and the rich of a state to force population and thereby lower the price of labour and consequently the expense of fleets and armies and the cost of manufactures for foreign sale but every attempt to the kind should be carefully watched and strenuously resisted by the friends of the poor particularly when it comes under the deceitful garb of benevolence and is likely on that account to be cheerfully and cordially received by the common people i entirely acquit mr pitt of any sinister intention in that clause of his poor bill which allows a shilling a week to every labourer for each child he has above three i confess that before the bill was brought into parliament and for some time after i thought that such a regulation would be highly beneficial but further reflection on the subject has convinced me that if its object be to better the condition of the poor it is calculated to defeat the very purpose which it has in view it has no tendency that i can discover to increase the produce of the country and if it tend to increase the population without increasing the produce the necessary and inevitable consequence appears to be that the same produce must be divided among a greater number and consequently that a day's labour will purchase a smaller quantity of provisions and the poor therefore in general must be more distressed i have mentioned some cases where population may permanently increase without a proportional increase in the means of subsistence but it is evident that the variation in different states between the food and the numbers supported by it is restricted to a limit beyond which it cannot pass in every country the population of which is not absolutely decreasing the food must be necessarily sufficient to support and to continue the race of labourers other circumstances being the same it may be affirmed that the countries are populous according to the quantity of human food which they produce and happy according to the liberality with which that food is divided or the quantity which a day's labour will purchase corn countries are more populous than pasture countries and rice countries more populous than corn countries the lands in england are not suited to rice but they would all bear potatoes and dr adam smith observes that if potatoes were to become the favourite vegetable food of the common people and if the same quantity of land were employed in their culture as is now employed in the culture of corn the country would be able to support a very much greater population and would consequently in a very short time have it the happiness of a country does not depend absolutely upon its poverty or its riches upon its youth or its age upon its being thinly or fully inhabited but upon the rapidity with which it is increasing upon the degree in which the yearly increase of food approaches to the yearly increase of an unrestricted population this approximation is always the nearest in new colonies where the knowledge and industry of an old state operate on the fertile unappropriated land of a new one 
in other cases the youth or the age of a state is not in this respect of very great importance it is probable that the food of great britain is divided in as great plenty to the inhabitants at the present period as it was two thousand three thousand or four thousand years ago and there is reason to believe that the poor and thinly inhabited tracts of the scotch highlands are as much distressed by an overcharged population as the rich and populous province of flanders were a country never to be overrun by a people more advanced in arts but left to its own natural progress in civilization from the time that its produce might be considered as a unit to the time that it might be considered as a million during the lapse of many hundred years there would not be a single period when the mass of people could be said to be free from distress either directly or indirectly for want of food in every state in europe since we have first had accounts of it millions and millions of human existences have been repressed from this simple cause though perhaps in some of these states an absolute famine has never been known famine seems to be the last and most dreadful resource of nature the power of population is so superior to the power in the earth to produce subsistence for man that premature death must in some shape or other visit the human race the vices of mankind are active and able ministers of depopulation they are the precursors in the great army of destruction and often finish the dreadful work themselves but should they fail in this war of extermination sickly seasons epidemics pestilence and plague advance in terrific array and sweep off their thousands and ten thousands should success be still incomplete gigantic inevitable famine stalks in the rear and with one mighty blow levels the population with the food of the world must it not then be acknowledged by an attentive examiner of the histories of mankind that in every age and in every state in which man has existed that the increase of population is necessarily limited by the means of subsistence that population does invariably increase when the means of subsistence increase and that the superior power of population is repressed and the actual population kept equal to the means of subsistence by misery and vice End of chapter seven recording by geoffrey edwards